Hi everyone, welcome to the Laser Channel where we learn, create, and share. My name is Greg, and in today's video, I am going to be turning this boring block of wood into a beautiful award plaque with a color infill. And I'm going to be sharing my secret on how to get that clean, crisp color infill without any of that color bleeding into the surrounding area. Now this block of wood is too thick to fit inside of the S1 machine, even when I remove the honeycomb. And that's why I'm going to be installing the X-Tool riser base for the machine. All this and more coming up in today's video. Thanks for joining me for another video on the Laser Channel. I'm going to get started by doing a brief unboxing. We're gonna check out the contents and the packaging of this riser base. Let's get to it. All right, let's get started with this. And this, by the way, is the very first time that I'm opening the box. I have these things that come in and I really resist the urge to try and open them up and check them out before recording. But things like this accessory, I think I can hold out and we can share the experience together. And as usual, the first thing I see on the top is a nice manual. When I flip this through, it's the customary, nice high quality X-Tool manual with nice full color graphics inside. And again, some of this really nice black foam. I'll go on, I find a couple uh, little screw bags, a nice Allen wrench to go with it for the assembly. I've got a nice green box here. We'll probably catch that on the overhead camera because if I hold it up over here, I'm shooting in front of a green screen so the box most likely disappears. And inside of here, I've got a black cloth which feels like a nice pair of safety glasses in which they are. These have a nice yellow tint. I don't think I've ever seen yellow tint laser safety glasses. And more packaging. This is very well packaged. And here I get out the left side and the right side. Of course, we're checking out the big clearly labeled stickers on there. That's going to assist during the assembly. And I've got some foam tape. And then I've got the door. That one will, of course, be for the front. Another door for the back. Before I move this box off to the side, I do wanna draw our attention to the front for this riser base. This does support the conveyor feeder being connected up to the riser base. This facilitates this because the front and back access doors do fold down and that's how it is compatible with the conveyor feeder. The assembly of the riser base is gonna be, well, pretty basic and straightforward. And that's going to be thanks to the assembly manual. It does a very clear job of explaining how everything goes together. And beyond that, Xtool also has an assembly video. In fact, that's what I watched before I unboxed everything. And I'll have a link to that video down below. That video, by the way, not only shows the assembly of the riser base itself, it also shows the S1 laser machine being connected up to the riser base. With that covered, I'm gonna go through just a couple segments of this being assembled. The assembly of the base and the installation of the machine took all together only 10 minutes. Everything was very straightforward and everything made sense. I do have two tips for you. The first one being when I remove the base plate out of the machine itself, there's nine screws that come out and those don't get reused. 
So I took one of the empty fastener bags from the base and I put the nine screws in here and I will label this bag and put it with all the goodies that came with the S1 machine for future use. The second tip really has two parts to it and it is the fasteners that attach the S1 machine down to the base. There's one screw that's longer than all the rest and it goes over in the middle position on this side of the machine. The second part of tip two is to watch the X-Tool assembly of this uh, base plate with the machine. It does an awesome job of guiding you through step by step where everything goes and how everything fits together. This went together like a breeze and now I'm ready to jump into the computer and start using the X-Tool Creative Space software. We're gonna check out the graphic and get cracking on this award plaque for today's video. In the background, I took that large board that I had and I cut it down to the size that I need for today's project. That board was rough cut, meaning it had a lot of rough surfaces on it. And this plaque, I want it to be perfectly smooth. So I sanded it down with a random orbit sander. If you're on the market for a sander, this is the type of sander that I recommend because it does quick work of big jobs. I'm gonna set this off to the side, but I'm gonna be using this again a little bit later on in the video. Next up, I'm gonna get my project material inside of the machine. I'm gonna get it squared up, and then within the X-Tool software, I'm gonna mark out my processing area so I have that relationship of where my work material is inside of the machine and where it appears within the workspace of my software. Look at this, I have this nice box. If you're not familiar with X-Tool software, this box is the exact size and location of the material inside of the machine. This is why I love using the X-Tool software matched up to the S1 laser machine. Now when I pan up, we're going to see that I already have my graphic loaded in. I'm going to pull that down and get it squared up inside this process area and it snaps into place perfectly centered up on that work material. We'll see that I've already picked some settings for the engraving. Now this is going to be one of the key areas for success on this project with the color infill is I need to be pretty aggressive with how deep I engrave. I want to be at least two millimeters deep. Um, if we're in the inch side we're going to be uh, deeper than a sixteenth of an inch. The settings that I'm trying is 90% power, that is with a 40 watt laser module. My speed is fairly slow at 120 millimeters per second, and my lines per centimeter is fairly high at 200. When we take a look at the graphic here, uh, this award plaque I'm kind of making for myself because for myself, this was something that I never thought I'd be able to do is uh, achieve 10,000 subscribers from you viewers. Um, and that happened uh, yesterday when we take a look at the computer clock down here. We're at 8.15. That happened uh, late yesterday afternoon. So I wanted to create a little keepsake for myself. And I thought, what better way than to use an X-Tool machine? Because this channel started with using one of the original D1 X-Tool machines. So quite a long way that I've come and X-Tool has come. Well, back to the project here. This all looks good. I'll get the exhaust system connected up to the machine, start some background music, and we'll watch a couple segments of this engraving being made. Engraving's complete, and let's check this out. Oh, this looks pretty good. Check out all the detail here. I am seeing that the engraving is much deeper than it needed to be. I guess I am still getting used to the power of a 40 watt laser module. Next step is to clean up all of the smoke residue from the engraving. And to do that, I'm going to use some LA's Totally Awesome. I'll spray down the entire surface spray wash the surface with some water and then immediately dry this down. I'll be back in just a minute. 
I've got all the residue cleaned up, and while this air dries, I have a question for you viewers. And that is, when it got down to engraving the numbers and the letters, it was doing each one individually and spending a lot of time doing it. And I wanted it to engrave all the way across the way it did on the top here. Let me know in the comments what I should do within the Xtool software so that this engraves all the way across. Next, I'm gonna show you my secret step on how to get the perfect color fill on all of these numbers and letters. A little while later, and the plaque is all dry, and for the secret step, I am going to be using some sanding sealer. What this is going to do is plug all the pores in the wood so that in the next step, when we color infill all these areas, that paint is not going to be able to seep into the wood, creating this hazy outline around all of our different shapes and letters. When I apply the sanding sealer, of course, I'm gonna get inside all the letters across the top surface, and because it also produces a really nice finish, I'm gonna get all of the other surfaces on this plaque, including the back side. The sanding sealer is all dry, and I can apply two light coats of some nice red paint. The paint's all dry, but things look a little messy. To clean that up, I'll use the sander one more time. Some of you might be wondering why I bothered with all the steps of applying the sanding sealer, doing that messy paint job throughout all of this, sanding it again, but we're rewarded with all of these beautiful, clean, crisp lines. That sanding sealer prevented any of that paint to seep or weep into the surrounding areas. To finish this project off, to get that wood grain to pop and this red paint to really pop, I'm going to be applying one more coat of the sanding sealer. The sanding sealer is all dry and this project looks great. While I love the results that I have on today's project, I think that there's a couple things that I would change if I made this project again, starting out with the riser base. I don't think I would have waited so long to get the riser base. I would have gotten it much, much sooner. That would allow me to make projects just like what we saw in today's video. The other things I would change specifically on the project, I don't think I needed to engrave nearly as deep as I need to. For that, I think I would have doubled the speed that I had within the Xtool software. That would result in a much shallower engraving and also save me a lot of time. That also still allows me to use the option of a brush on paint, or if I wanted to save even more time, I could use a spray acrylic paint such as this Iron Lac or the Montana brand. I think they're pretty much the same paint. Join me in the next video where I connect up the RA2 rotary chuck up to the S1 laser machine. The project material for that video is going to be this black coated tumbler. I'll be engraving one side of the tumbler with the 40 watt laser module and the other side of the cup, I'm going to engrave using the two watt IR module. It's gonna be really interesting to see the results of both engravings. I had a lot of fun creating today's video content. If you enjoyed it, give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, or ring that notification bell. Not only is it a great way to help the laser channel grow, it's an awesome way to connect video content like this with other great viewers just like you. Well, until we meet again in the next video, learn, create, and share.